Up next in track two is Rose Songer. She is a governance, compliance, and risk leader uh, with her talk, GRC, the Swiss Army Knife. All questions will be handled in Discord as this is a recorded presentation. So please use the track two channel for any questions you may have for Rose. Hi everyone, I am presenting uh, GRC, a Swiss Army Knife today. My name is Rose Zonger. I am super pumped to talk about this. Um, I am a governance risk compliance geek. I love all things GRC. And so I was trying to think of ways to better represent GRC and InfoSec, and also just better represent GRC in general um, as that sort of team is often seen as a blocker to the business. So this talk takes GRC and discusses how can we make GRC more of an enabler for the business and turn GRC into a Swiss Army knife for the organization. Um, Swiss Army knives are multifaceted tools. You can use them for so many different things. Um, and in fact, when you Google tools like the, the Swiss Army knives, there's so many different varieties, like hundreds and hundreds. They're red, they're black, they have screwdrivers, they have knives, they have scissors, they have everything that you could possibly imagine. And it allows the person to select that sort of like Swiss Army knife that best works for them. And so we're taking that concept and saying, how can we leverage DRC, which is a multifaceted tool, and apply it to the business with all these different functionalities. So super pumped to talk about this today. And I hope you guys also enjoy this talk. Um, I do want to note that what I'm talking about today, these um, guidelines, practices, whatever you want to call them, really can be applied across the organization for any team. So uh, don't fear if you don't work in GRC and there's no real takeaways for you because the goal of this talk is anybody can take away something from this, whether you are actually working in governance risk compliance or you're working on a blue team, a red team, you're working in engineering, you're working in some sort of part of the business. So this will allow you to, to take some tips and tricks and apply them to your own group if you're having struggles. So um, let's get started. I'll move my little bubble out of the way so we can actually see what the content is on these slides. So once again, I am Rose. We're going to be doing GRC as a Swiss Army knife. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I am currently working at Spring Health. So Spring Health is a mental health company that is trying to eliminate all barriers to mental health. Um, they have such a wonderful mission that they are trying to do. Um, this is a SaaS-based company, and so what they do is use data and analytics in order to be able to provide real, true care to patients and not throwing a dart at a wall and hoping it sticks when it comes to patient care, which is great. Mental health is so critical in the environment that we're living in now, and it's wonderful to be a part of a company that understands that, is trying to eliminate those barriers and get people the right care at the right time. Um, so currently I am the director of IT and compliance at Spring Health. Both those departments report up to me. Um, I have a master's in cybersecurity. I have a bachelor's in advanced networking. I have my CISSP. I have some other security certifications. So pretty much I've just been going after education. Um, and then I also do a lot of different things in the community. Um, I mentor with women in cybersecurity. I do, um, I'm a program lead for the diversity and tech group at Spring Health. And I love to do speaking and contributing in the InfoSec community. Um, I find it so critical to give back to the community in any way that I can, especially InfoSec, and especially topics that aren't really talked about a whole lot. Um, people trying to bait, break into the GRC realm, there's not always the best resources available for them. Um, and so I really try to uh, put my knowledge back out into the world by doing different things like that. Now, um, that's kind of like my paper background. Uh, I have had lots of different experience over a lot of different industries that have equipped me with the tools to be able to talk about how to navigate the nuances of a business. So I spent about eight years in the military um, where I was doing IT work and network engineering, and then I got out and 
I was in the, a contractor for the government for a little bit and um, doing more like um, system administrator type stuff, working on just SIGs, and then eventually became a security analyst and kind of like navigated my way to GRC. And through that time, I worked in a lot of different industries, whether it's healthcare, retail, um, education, government. So it allowed me to really pick up a lot of different tips and tricks on how to uh, influence others to do the things that I need for them and build really good rapport with these different types of people. So I'm leveraging all those things that I've learned in the past in order to be able to talk about things for now and improve the future. So really hoping that you guys get some good takeaways from this talk. Uh, today, our agenda includes talking about the GRC pillars and the challenges within GRC. So we want to level set what exactly is GRC, what do we do, why do we do it, those sort of things. We'll want to talk about the relationships in the organization, um, super critical, who are we working with on a regular basis, um, the pronged approach. So I talked about how we leverage GRC as a Swiss Army knife. Well, let's talk about what, what does that actually mean? What are those prongs? Um, and some takeaways. So ultimate goal of any presentation that you go to is that there's takeaways that you can bring back to your own organization. So we'll talk about some takeaways, get you in a good spot. Um, and you guys can always reach out on the um, different communication methods. I go over at the end of this deck in case you guys want to talk about some takeaways for your particular organization. So GRC, uh, what is that? What, what are we talking about here? So GRC, Governance, Risk, and Compliance. Um, this group tends to be um, the group that manages our uh, legal, regulatory, contractual type obligations. And they're kind of broken down into these three different pillars that happen. And each of these pillars have their own functionalities of things that need to happen. So we have governance, so aligning our processes and actions with the business organization's business goals. So policy standards, procedures, how those are being applied within the organization, how we um, go about communicating those and making sure that the organization is aware, as well as aligning to those business goals. And then we have risk. So identifying and addressing all organizational risks. Um, GRC tends to focus more on the let's say InfoSec risk. So anything relating to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability um, that could be affected by these risks. Uh, but this pillar really encompasses third-party risk management, risk management for the organization, um, risk registers, and communicating all of that up. Um, you could probably also include the way that you address client security questionnaires within this process. So um, thinking of the things that your customers or clients are expecting of you and whether or not you're actually able to adhere that. And if not, then you can capture it as risk or process it in another way. But risk, super critical function happening there, making sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can to, to enable the organization to make risk aware decisions. Then we have compliance. So um, ensuring all activities meet legal and regulatory requirements. A uh, really good example, my organization is a healthcare organization. So uh, HIPAA, entirely relevant for us, how we comply with HIPAA security rule, privacy rule, breach notification. So that HIPAA component is really important. But as you start to expand what sort of services you're doing, what are the other things that come into scope? So we have global people, in particular, we have EU citizens, so GDPR becomes in scope for us. Um, we also have people that reside in California, so CCPA becomes relevant to us. And this particular pillar manages or maintains awareness of those legal and regulatory requirements that we need to adhere to. So a lot of different functionalities are happening within these three pillars that are really critical to the organization when you break down why their purposes exist. Unfortunately, the business doesn't always understand this. And so we get lost in translation and become more of the blocker versus an enabler. When these pillars are functioning right, we're enabling the business to work faster, harder, stronger, but it takes a lot of finesse in the back end and why we're talking about the things that we're talking about today. So, um, 
be sure to be mindful of what is included in your program. And additionally, if you're using this talk as a way to improve your own department and it's not necessarily GRC, the same concept applies. What are those pillars, programs, processes happening within your department and how are you maintaining awareness of it and how does it impact the organization and how does it ultimately impact the bottom line because the business will want to understand what's that return on investment for each of these things happening. And so tying it back to that, that revenue, the bottom line, whatever you want to call it, will really help you go a long ways to making this a more functional program within the organization. All right, so we have um, my little talking bubble. <laughs> I need to get out of the way here for the presentation. Um, so we have challenges with GRC that happen. Um, and before you even attempt to fix your program, it's really important that you um, understand what are the challenges for your particular program. On here on the screen, what I've done is put some items that are just very generic to GRC, but take a really good hard look at your program and understand what is actually happening versus not happening. What are the challenges? What are your employees telling you? And take that back and figure out your plans based in alignment with those challenges. So um, some of the challenges that I've seen is you're only focused on the regulatory, um, really, really do not want to be a checkbox compliance activity program. It really does not translate well. The organization can tell you're just doing checkbox things. And so when you're only focused on the regulatory, you stay in that one point of time and you're not in a continuous state of improvement. So really make sure that that is not the only focus. What are you really trying to accomplish with your program? Um, also, achieving cross-functional collaboration, super challenging because compliance is always going to somebody, I need you to do this, you must do it, it's due here. And it really prohibits us from having this very great cross-functional collaboration happening. And once you reach the point where you're working cross-functionally across the entire organization, you will find that life is significantly easier. You've built rapport, you've done all these things, and you've achieved the point, and this no longer becomes a challenge but it takes a lot of work to get there. Um, being in a reactive versus proactive state. Super critical item here. You want your program to always be in a proactive state. How can we get better? What can we get ahead of? Don't wait until the last minute, the month that your audit is going to be happening to say, oh, we need to do a DR test because what's going to happen is the organization is going to be frustrated. They're not going to want to participate or do the activity, they will do it because they understand that it's a requirement, but now you've created tension between these teams versus being proactive and looking at how does this best align with the business objectives throughout the year? Um, and what are other things that we can get ahead of? So make sure that you're really in a more proactive state. Um, lack of alignment between GRC and business. Leadership within your department, or if you're the leader yourself, you need to understand how does GRC ultimately affect the business? What are the business goals, objectives, and how do my processes really affect those? And how can I communicate those up the chain? So important that you understand that. It's not good enough to say, oh, we just need to do this because HIPAA requires, but what's the return on investment? How is that impacting a goal? What are the things they need to understand from a business perspective? So you need to start speaking the language of the business. The last item that I have listed on here, and traditionally GRC has been in this realm for a really long time, and it's too many manual processes. So we are getting to the point that GRC really can automate things, things like vendor reviews and risk acceptance and um, things like completing client questionnaires and access reviews and all these different things. Taking the manual out of it will really build a good relationship with either the people that need to do it or reduce the overhead for your team. When you reduce the overhead for your team, they're able to focus on other things like getting out of a reactive state. So understand your processes that are happening and evaluate, are these too manual or not? Now, um, with challenges, you often see an ineffective GRC program happening. 
Um, some of the things that we have happening is unnecessary program complexity. Do you have a process happening that has 20 steps and should it really only have five? Do you require unnecessary emails or actions? What are the things that are happening and how can you simplify your program? Because when you simplify your program or the process is happening, it allows the business to be more accepting of the things that need to happen. If the business needs to use a vendor for a project they're trying to do, but to get through the process, they need to talk to finance, legal, IT, compliance, all these different groups, and the process seems really clunky, they don't know how to get through it, they're not going to want to do it. And then what you're ultimately going to have, what you really don't want to have with a GRC program, is non-compliance or non-conformity happening. And so those sort of non-conformities really do stem when you have a program that is super complex. So look at your program, understand, are these processes really necessary for the program and how can I best simplify? Another aspect of an ineffective GRC program is um, un unknown service level agreements for processes. When your program isn't operating in the way that is isn't intended and you're not capturing data and metrics and all those other good things, how are you able to tell the business how long it takes to do something? For example, I can tell you right now that 90% of the time we are able to turn around a client questionnaire, regardless of the size, in less than seven days because I've done those data and metrics. And this allows me to tell the business, business, the client questionnaires we get will take seven days. This also allows me to start reducing that time and understanding why is it at seven days and can we reduce that? In most cases you can, but you won't ever know that until you do the activity where you know the data and analytics behind it. So know those. Um, delays in client questionnaires. So if you uh, are not tracking all the different questions your clients ask, um, maintaining some sort of repository or using a tool like RFPIO or any of the other tools out there, you're going to have delays in client questionnaires. And that's going to be really ineffective. You're going to have um, teams like sales or account management or customer success fussing about getting these questionnaires back. But it also could impact the bottom line. If you have a delay in this questionnaire, maybe the client decides not to work with your uh, organization because you cannot answer it in a timely manner. It could risk dollar value in work that the business could receive. So it's important that you understand that and the impact. Lack of visibility into risk. If the organization does not know of the risk that exists, they cannot remediate, they cannot take action, and you're not enabling them to make risk-aware decisions. So super critical, you understand the risk, you understand how you manage them, and you assess risk on an ongoing basis, whether it's internal risk, external risk. So understand those risks. Um, increased employee costs, employee or cost overhead due to reactive nature. Again, we're trying to simplify the program. And if you have a bunch of manual processes happening, that means employee overhead and hours spent, and if you are in a reactive nature, maybe you have to spend more on cost in order to expedite something that could have been otherwise avoided if you had been in a more proactive state. So understand your processes, how much time should be dedicated, and start simplifying because then you'll see the employees can start working on other things that are maybe more critical. And then the last item that I have on here is GRC lacking a understanding of the technology in use at the organization. It's really hard for us to tell you what to secure or how to secure it if we do not understand the technology. So if you find that your team just does not understand your technology stack, you really should invest in getting them the education they need to be successful because what you'll see happen is if they aren't understanding, they don't understand how it operates, when they go to talk to the tech SMEs, they will be frustrated with them because they don't understand the technology and they won't speak the same language and it'll lead to frustrations, annoyance, and all those things that we don't want happening. So make sure your team understands your tech stack, understands how to secure it, and can get you to the right place with the things that need to happen. Now, we have tons of different relationships happening in the organization. Um, we have 
legal where we do contracts and all those other good things. We have sales where sales is working with the client. We have IT where we're hand in hand working on things that need to be secured for the organization. We have customer success where they're only concerned about making sure their customer is successful. We have engineering, which are building our platform and our tech stack. And we have product figuring out the latest and greatest that we need to do to keep our um, consumers loving our products. We have people ops or HR that we need to work with. And all of these groups are so critical within the organization. And this is not an all-encompassing list. GRC touches every single org in the business, every single one of them. And so it's super critical for each of these that you build a rapport and that you understand the challenges that they face and you understand how can I get ahead of these challenges for them? How can I be a better business partner? So understand these relationships, understand how they tie into your program and start mapping those out. Really critical, make sure you understand those. Now, here we are, we're gonna talk about um, this pronged approach real quick. So um, again, this Swiss Army knife is just so multifaceted. It can do so many things for you. And I really wanted to use this concept for this presentation just to kind of give you a visual representation of how to tie that back into the things that you need to accomplish. So we'll talk about the prong approach. For this presentation, I did five prongs. I did communication, um, I did advocacy, I did training, I did enablement and automation. Now, this doesn't mean that your Swiss Army knife can't have six, can't have four, it can have whatever you want. Um, I'm just gonna go with the things that I thought would be most useful for this presentation and hopefully you gain some value out of it. And again, if you need to talk about things more particular to your organization, please feel free to uh, send me a communication any way that you can. And uh, we'll talk about what is that best approach for your org to get you to a really good spot. So for this prong, we have the communication, we have advocating, we have training, we enable, and we automate. Each of these have very particular reasons why they are in here, and we'll cover this as part of reviewing the Swiss Army Knife. So the first one I'll start with that is ultra crit critical to the organization um, and one of the biggest takeaways I want to encourage all of you guys to be mindful of when you go back to your organization is the communication aspect. So for communication, I have found that it is almost always the root cause analysis of why we were not successful. When we look at why we weren't able to execute, why we had this issue, something negative occurred, it almost always goes back to communication. And this is one of the things that I um, make sure that my team is always mindful of. So we'll talk about communication and how that is important. We'll talk about different communication channels. Um, we'll talk about some mechanisms and consumability and leaning into the culture of your organization. Now for channels of communication, um, I recently did a really, really great talk um, for my diversity and tech group. So my diversity and tech group, we had a um, we had a fireside chat happen and we had the chief product officer from a really great company come out and me and her had a discussion with our engineering group, our data science group, our um, infosec groups and IT and compliance. And we talked about communication because communication is just so critical. And she had this really great concept that I stole from this present, uh, stole from our talk and incorporated it into this presentation. And so I encourage you to think about what are the communication channels happening at your organization. In particular, we talked about upwards, sideways, and downwards communication and how that's applicable to the organization. So for upwards communication, you're looking at the communication that goes up to C-suite, leaders, customers, clients, and it's high level details. What is the information that they need to know at a leadership level? Not in the weeds, not we're gonna do all these very like nuanced things. What are the high level things that they need to understand in order to be able to um, make effective decisions? 
Then we have sideways. So this is the communication to your peers, um, to other leads, whoever, that is information to steer towards risk reduction and super vague way of saying, just ensuring they have the information to be successful, they're eliminating risk, and they're executing on the things that you need them to. And then finally, you have downwards communication. So what is the communication needed for um, direct reports, individual contributors, and essentially the people that are actually implementing the things that we need? So these are going to be the implementation details. These are going to be in the weeds. These are going to be the things that they need to know to be successful. They have a control, and this control requires points one, two, and three to be implemented, and how to, should they implement it? All of those things. So this is important that you understand these channels and you understand the channels operating at your organization and lean into the channels, and you'll find you start to be more successful. And again, for GRC, it is super critical that you are being more proactive. And in particular, you're being proactive with um, making sure that all three of these pillars have the relevant information so they stay in the know and they're not blindsided. Being proactive with them and giving them a heads up. So culture, we need to lean into that culture um, when we do, you notice that the communication becomes much more effective. So for the culture, we have, um, does your organization use Teams? And do you have it super structured? Or do you use Slack and you use channels and you do all these different things? Or is your organization really big on just picking up the phone or sending an email or walking to somebody's desk? All of these play such a critical part of figuring out how to be more effective. And if you are working in a largely remote environment, how do you lean into that culture in order to get them to do the things that you need? So with that, it's important that you understand all these different mechanisms to communicate and you take the channel in which you're trying to communicate and making sure the information is in alignment with that channel and you're leveraging the culture aspect. And ultimately, the information is consumable for that audience member, whoever that is. The information should be written in a way that they know their call to action. They understand what they need to do, when they need to do it, and why they are trying to do it, and the impact if it's not done. And it needs to be written to the audience member. So make sure that you're keeping that in mind when you're thinking about the culture, you're thinking of these channels of communication. Um, before I wrap up the communication aspect, I want to make sure that um, you also are taking steps as a leader to facilitate your team knowing this. And so if your team is like fussing a lot, saying they're not able to get people to get things done, they are having challenges. I encourage you to look at the communication piece and see what's breaking down there. And if you find that the communication, maybe the team isn't communicating effectively, do some training on it. Only thing that's going to do is enable them to be more successful in their career long term. It never hurts to provide more professional training like that to enable them to be successful. And what you'll find is you'll end up having happy, thriving employees because they find that they're able to do their job much better and they're having less resistance when working with these other teams. Now, advocating is uh, a part of GRC that I don't think is talked about enough. And so um, what I mean by that is advocating for cross-functional teams to work and collaborate together and not bullying them into work. And a, another reason why we're seen as blockers or negative Nancy's or the redheaded subchildren, whatever you want to call GRC, I don't want that happening. I want us to be seen as an enabler. And if we're trying to bully people into work and not using effective communication, it really can come across like that. And we're not advocating for these other teams. How can we lift them up to be successful while also accomplishing that things that we need to do? And so um, adv advocating for these teams, I've called out a couple of different things and it's stuff as embedding security within business processes, 
So if my engineering team is trying to execute on a pull request and all the different things they need to do, they shouldn't be blocked because I say, oh, you can't do that. They should already be enabled to work faster, harder, stronger by embedding security into their processes in the first place. And this can be done through tools, codifying, whatever you want to leverage. We then have work alignment. So this ties into product and business roadmaps. How can I align the work that needs to happen with these different roadmaps all occurring? And it's critical that you're looking at these business roadmaps and you're understanding what's happening throughout the year. I can tell you, our organization being a healthcare organization, the beginning of the year is always the most critical time happening. As a leader of GRC, I would never tell engineering, we need to do a massive um, incident response exercise that I need a bunch of other people for, for multiple hours, because it would cause undue burden to those teams and create misalignment in the work that needs to happen. So to the best of your capabilities, you should be looking at these product and business roadmaps and figuring out where are their lulls in the business that GRC could better incorporate into. And we're leveraging those lulls to get the things done versus bullying them into work when it's already a high stressful time. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the work that needs to happen for these different teams. So training is um, super important, just like everything else that I'm talking about today. Um, the training aspect is something that I think is overlooked when we talk about GRC. And I'm not talking about training relating to security awareness. What I am talking about, though, is training for the people that interact with us. What are we trying to accomplish with them and why? So the training is important to set us up for success, but also set them up for success. So a couple different trainings that I've um, kind of included in here is understanding technologies. So if we have an ineffective program happening, um, the lack of technology understanding for the tech stack, important. So the understanding technologies can go both ways. Can you get your GRC understanding the platform and all the different components? And can you get the business, whoever in the business, to understand the technologies that GRC is using? Are we using tooling to automate vendor reviews? Do they need to use a certain ticketing system? Do they need to use a certain tool for access reviews? Um, the next is decoding controls. If your governance risk compliance team does not understand how to interpret a control, they will not be able to tell that to the business and the business will not be able to implement those controls. So your team needs to understand how to wear their special decoder glasses because if anybody's looked at these controls, they understand that they're very challenging to understand and consume. So we have decoding the controls, but for these controls, we also need to make sure that they are decoded for the implementer. How can we best enable the implementer to go put these controls in place and understand what they're actually trying to do? So it goes hand in hand. And then finally, effectiveness testing. Your program is only as effective as how you're testing it for its effectiveness. So your team should understand how they should be doing that through the course of the year and how they should be documenting inefficiencies. Um, this will prompt you into a continuous improvement cycle. And I would encourage you to make sure that your more technology-based teams are understanding how they do that for their controls as well. Do they have a process happening that takes them 10 hours when it really should take them two? Are, um, is business not removing the access within one business day? Those are things that you could look at and see how can I make these more effective? So look at that, understand how you would actually test it within your org and figure out how you would take that long term and apply it and get into a continuous improvement cycle. Next, we're going to talk about enabling the business. So um, GRC, as we know, is typically seen as a blocker to the business. We are the redheaded stepchildren, we're the naysayers, negative Nancy's, all of those good things that we've all probably heard. But as we know, GRC really isn't trying to be a blocker. And a lot of us 
tend to express frustrations around that because we really do care about the business working as fast as they can and we want to enable them to be successful. However, we haven't reached the point of figuring out how to take GRC out of the stone ages where we're working very manual and we're not able to communicate and we don't have the knowledge and understanding to a point that we're actually able to enable the business to work in a way that they really need to work faster, harder, stronger. So we're going to talk about enabling the business and what I mean through trust and transparency, these measuring and metrics and continuous improvement. So measurement and metrics, um, how are you measuring the operational effectiveness of your program? And this ties into the training that I just talked about. You should be understanding what are the different things that you actually need to measure. So on one hand, we're teaching the team how to evaluate for effectiveness. On the other hand, we have defined these very concrete measurement metrics that we want to apply to the org. Um, let's say I want to understand if everybody's doing their new hire training within 30 days. Okay, well, I gather the data and analytics and I understand, oh, well, that actually is happening. How can I get to the next continuous improvement point? Well, maybe I say I want to see 90% of the new hires do their training within 15 days. And you measure that. And maybe you find that they're actually doing it within 95% of the time within those 15 days. Then what you can do with this sort of metric is say, how can I get the employee up running faster than what they're currently doing? So if you're at an organization where they have to do the training before they even get access to systems, how can I better figure that out to make sure that that happens in a timely way? And how can I leverage these metrics to start making our program more operationally effective? So there's lots of different ways that you can break that down. And then it also allows you to gain a maturity understanding of your program. And kind of taking that security awareness example, you have um, different maturity models that happen that you could incorporate into how you're gathering your metrics. So um, a good example for security awareness is SAN's maturity model. They've clearly defined out at these five different levels what you should be doing. And at level two, Maybe you're just doing compliance. That's bare minimum, new hire, and annual training. But you've started to gather metrics and analytics, and you have people reaching out proactively, and you start reaching the next maturity point of behavioral change. Well, now you're starting to gain an understanding of that maturity, and you're also able to explain that to the business. And can you explain that to the business in dollar terms? So last year in 2021, we saw that 20% of the organization succumbed to phishing. But this year, because of fill in the blank of things that we've done, we've actually reduced that down to 10%. And we've seen a 50% increase on employees reaching out directly to security. Lots of really great information to gain there, but you'll never gain it unless you define these out and you get into a place that you're actually trying to measure them year over year or quarter over quarter or whatever those cadences are. So make sure that you've documented that and make sure it's communicated to your team. So the team wants to understand how they contribute to these metrics, these KPIs, these whatevers for your org. And if they don't know that, it's really hard for them to, to gain that sort of awareness and understand how they're contributing value to the org. Then you also want to make sure that these are defined and available for your leadership. Leadership wants to see this. So if you have the ear of your C-suite, your leaders, your extended leadership team, you can make sure that they have this information and they understand how this program is really operating. Now, with that, I'm going to go back to this slide here and just talk about trust and transparency. Um, this is so critical for you to understand how you can do this. Um, and in particular, what I'm really talking about is, do you, you trust your team to go do the job that you need them to do? Do your counterparts trust you to take care of them, to help them, to not throw them under the bus when they don't commit to a control? So lots of like ways to build that trust, build that rapport that you need to do with your peers, your employees, whoever. 
And then be transparent. What are the things that need to happen and how can you enable the organization to make those happen? Don't sweep things under the rug because once you do that, you get into a very um, bad place where you're keeping secrets and things like that. And a, a program is only as effective as the trust and transparency happening. So you leverage some things like the metrics and the continuous improvement and say transparently, we aren't where we need to be. We're at a maturity model of level one and we could get to a better spot, but we need to do this, this, and this. And if you're having challenges with your peers or the people that need to implement the things, you need to take that leap of faith, trust them, talk to them, be candid and say, look, business partner, look, engineer, look, peer, whoever you're talking to and say, we are at risk of not being able to do this thing. And this is why it's important. Don't just say it like we're at risk. It's a high risk because that means nothing to them. However, if you tie it back to look, peer, we're at risk of not completing this thing that's super critical to the organization. And the impact of this happening is that we don't achieve this certification in a timely manner and we're unable to provide it to our customers and we could lose four contracts in $4 billion or five contracts and these super great logos that we want to have on our website of customers. And so you tie it back into language that they actually understand and you build that trust and rapport with them. But you have to kind of embrace this value of trust and transparency and make sure that they have the knowledge and you're not sweeping things under the rug and you've trusted them with the information. Now, um, I love automation. Let me move my little bubble out of the way again. Um, I love automation. I love talking about it. And it's one of the things, quite frankly, I don't get to do enough anymore, um, but I'm super pumped that my employees actually get to work on this. Uh, GRC has really come a long way. We have so many different tools out there now, so many different ways to automate the things that we're doing. And so um, got some little tips and tricks here for automation. First being automation of vendor reviews, access reviews, things like that. Um, did you know that you really can build a system from start to finish to do vendor reviews in almost an entirely automated fashion? Um, so there's tools out there that exist. You either need to have the budget or you need to be creative. So if you have a super manual process happening and you don't have the budget to leverage a GRC tool, you can build a lot of automation with tools readily available to you. Um, in fact, I did a um, demo of this once leveraging Microsoft spreadsheets to have macros in it to automatically score to um, embed it in an email, to send it to somebody, do all these different things and you really can do it. So take a look at what tools you have available to you. Say, all right, I wanna start automating these things. What are, what are the creative solutions that I can apply? And if you have the budget, great, get a tool because there's so many different things out there, but you absolutely 100% can automate even if you don't have a tool. Um, get ahead of technical expectations. So, um, my engineering product, IT, security, whoever should understand their guardrails ahead of time. And they should be able to put those guardrails in their own processes and their own technical things happening. And then you should be building the security and the CICD pipelines. So we don't want to block the business from doing the things that they need to do. But we often do because we catch things when they're already like mid process. So Get ahead of these different guardrails that we can give them. Here's the things that you can do, and I'm not going to stop you from doing the things as long as you stay in the parameters that I've defined for you. So figure out all these different automations because what's going to happen is your partners in these different technology groups are going to be insanely happy that you are no longer forcing them to come to you every time they need to ask a question but you rather enable them to be more successful at the onset. So look at those, figure out how you can actually apply those in your org. Okay, so super glad we're here towards the tail end. 
And I sincerely hope that you guys got some takeaways from this uh, presentation today. I have a couple takeaways. They're not all encompassing. Um, they're not, you know, the only thing that you can take from here. Um, so first and foremost, and I harped on this a lot, I think the most of the theme of this presentation is communication. And so the first thing I have here is build relationships. Get out of your comfort zone, build rapport, and be vulnerable. Um, and, and being vulnerable is such an odd thing to say during this, but I promise you, you will reap so many benefits from being vulnerable and getting to a place where you can talk candidly with people, you can trust them, because it really does allow you to operate more effectively. It allows you to enable the business. You understand what's going on in their mind, why they're doing the things they're doing. And sometimes you'll find maybe the reason they weren't doing the thing is they have stressors that is causing them to not be able to do the work. And you find that you can help remove these stressors for them. So build the relationships, build the rapport and be vulnerable. Automate where possible. So this ties into the, the next bullet down. So choose simplicity over complexity. Identify your processes. Identify what's happening. Identify how many steps, how many hours, all of those good things tying into your program and your processes. Make it as simplified as you can and automate where you can. What will happen is the business will start operating quicker. Your team will experience less overhead of needing to um, look at these things every single day. And you'll generally have a better happening happy, functional team. So make sure you're looking that. Use the right communication channel. So on top of building those relationships, understand, am I communicating up, down, sideways, whatever it is, and make sure that the information is consumable and you're leaning into that culture and you're using the right communication channel to get the actions that you need to happen. So have the right call to action. Make sure you're communicating in the right way. And then the last one here, I didn't really talk about it a whole lot. I alluded to client questionnaires in the beginning, but this is one that I think you guys will uh, reap a lot of good benefits from. Integrate into the sales pipeline quicker. Every one of us, we have customers of some sort. We are responsible to our customers in some way. And a lot of times GRC is responsible in the way of helping with um, reviewing contracts, data security addendums, um, MSAs, whatever, but we're also largely responsible for client questionnaires. And so when you integrate into the sales pipeline sooner, you start to build a better relationship with not just sales, but your team that's working on the proposals and all the other good things. And we're getting ahead of the things that the client needs sooner. And we're not slowing down the business when it comes again to the bottom line, which is what they're concerned about and getting them the work that they need and you're winning more things. Granted, like that's not the only function of GRC, but I, I do feel you guys would find a lot of benefit in making sure that you're integrated sooner. And it also reduces that burden to the team to try to knock out a 800 questionnaire in two days when you're getting ahead of it. It allows you to look at the capacity and the management of your team and say, all right, we know that uh, Spring Health is going to ask us to do a questionnaire in March. And that questionnaire maybe is going to be around 100 questions. And I need to save an hour and a half of my uh, compliance specialist time to be able to answer the questionnaire. We get it back in a timely manner and everybody is happy and content. So didn't talk about that one too much, but promise you, take a look at that. You will definitely receive a lot of benefit from it. Um, so yeah, some key takeaways there. And again, it's not all encompassing. It's really just meant for some like high level bullets that you could take away from this talk. Um, well, that's the end of my presentation. You guys can contact me via email at rose.songer at gmail. You can contact me on Twitter, Rose Songer. However, I would like to know I'm not super active on Twitter. Um, so if you need me right away, I highly encourage email or LinkedIn. You can find me at Rose Songer. Um, and I sincerely hope that you guys took some, some really good information away from this talk. 
Um, I, if you can't tell, I'm very passionate about GRC. I love talking all things governance, risk compliance, and I actually really do enjoy figuring out how can I make my team operate more effectively because not only am I concerned about the bottom line of how the business is operating and that return on investment relating to the revenue and all those good things, but I'm also really invested in how my team is thriving and have I set them up for success. And you'll find these things that we just talked about. If you start incorporating them into it, you find that your team really does start working a little bit more cohesively and you see that they have less frustrations with the business. But as a leader, it's my responsibility to make sure that they're set up for success by taking these different tools, tips, and tricks that we've talked about. So um, please take these away. And as always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. And um, thank you for joining today.